All right, Tony, thank you. Turning now to the housing crisis. By tomorrow, everyone camped out outside the Rhode Island State House must find somewhere else to go. Yesterday, nearly two dozen people were told by the McKee administration that they have until 9 o'clock Friday morning to be off the premises. Governor McKee says since then, the state has been able to relocate at least seven people to shelters. Earlier today, a lawyer representing those outside of the state house has filed an injunction to let those homeless individuals living there stay. 12 News reporter Matt Paddock has been at the state house all day. He joins us now live with the latest. Matt. Well, Mike, there's actually a protest going on here at the state house as demonstrators are coming together as one to support showing solidarity for those dealing with the homelessness crisis in our community. Now I want to step out of frame real quick and show you what that looks like right there at the corner of the state house. There are dozens here. Now I'm told by a pastor that they'll be saying a few prayers. They're also handing out chili to everyone so that they can stay warm giving out vegetables, giving out fruit and giving out water bottles. And as you can see there right at the state stops, the state police are on hand to make sure that things go smoothly. Once I was loved and adored because I had a job and I was contributing to society, but now that I'm homeless, I'm hated and abhorred. Lisa Hodges tells us she's come across some hard times once living in a three bedroom home. But after rising cost of rent and lack of affordable housing, she's now living right here outside of the state house. A lot of people are one paycheck away from being in this exact same position. It's an issue that's led headlines over the past week. As Caitlin from Mary says, there are hundreds of Rhode Islanders living on the streets. No place to go and keep safe from the outdoor elements. We have approximately 875 beds in our system and you know, last night I had six openings. We need to remember how bad the economy is. We've got rental assistance that existed that has ended. Governor McKee's office says they've offered everyone here transportation and a bed, as well as a place to store their belongings. Some already taking advantage of it. I mean, we got a you know serious issue that uh, you know uh, a few hundred people are experiencing right now, uh, and been very actively uh, creating uh, you know, shelter for them. And one of those plans to create shelter, the Cranston Street Armory, which McKee says he has high hopes for. The Armory is going to be a 24 seven with, with services there. So we're going to continue to expand the, the number until we have more shelter than we need. Working. The deadline for vendors for the Cranston Street Armory was originally planned for today, but that day has been pushed back until the 15th. Now we should know more about the timeline for the opening later in later next week. Reporting live from Providence, Matt Paddock, 12 News. Developing, there's a demonstration going on right now outside the Rhode Island State House as people camped out there have been told to leave by tomorrow morning. And we also learned at least one court filing aimed at blocking the eviction. Governor Dan McKee says they've already relocated about seven people to shelters, but many say their plight points to much bigger housing problems and the state needs to fix them. 12 News reporter Matt Paddock joins us live outside the State House with an update. Matt. Well, Mike Shannon, according to Governor McKee's staff, that eviction notice is not legally binding. But for those who do refuse to leave the state house by nine o'clock tomorrow morning, they could face a criminal proceeding for trespassing. But that new information that we got into our newsroom tonight is that we're learning that the injunction has been filed and a hearing is scheduled for 930 tomorrow morning. 30 minutes after those living here are expected to leave. We're human beings out here and we're being treated like animals. On Wednesday, Governor McKee's administration letting those staying outside of the state house know they're to be gone by nine o'clock Friday morning. Lisa Hodges is one of those people camping out and she says she came across hard times and was never able to quite get back on her feet. Once I was loved and adored because I had a job and I was contributing to society, but now that I'm homeless, I'm hated and abhorred. Putting the blame on a lack of affordable housing, saying she's applied for over 50 different places to stay. They want you to have, you know, three times the amount of the rent. Who makes that kind of money? Seriously, who makes that kind of money? Governor McKee's office says they've offered everyone here transportation and a bed, as well as a place to store their belongings, something that some have already taken advantage of. But for others like Hodges, she believes this is just a short term solution. A lot of people are one paycheck away from being in this exact same position. As far as shelters go, there's not enough beds. For Caitlin Frermi, executive director of the Rhode Island Coalition to End Homelessness, she agrees. We have approximately 875 
beds in our system and you know, last night I had six openings. Governor McKee responding to that, saying that this issue is very serious and something he and the state are working hard on. We're working with the providers to establish 350 plus new shelter beds right now, and that's um, that's really strong work by those people who are doing the work. We're going to continue to expand the, the number until we have more shelter than we need so that we actually can get to the work in terms of housing. And as that protest begins to wrap up here at the State House, the deadline for vendors for the Cranston Street Armory was originally today, but that date has been pushed back until the 15th. Now we should know more about that timeline for the opening late next week. Reporting live in Providence, Matt Paddock, 12 News.